oh no, not again. Not another mass shooting and especially not another school shooting. But the nightmare was not just a bad dream as the horrifying details emerged yesterday from Robb Elementary School in the small town of Uvalde, Texas. In a matter of days, we've witnessed a racially motivated mass shooting in Buffalo, New York, and a church shooting in Los Angeles, and now a mass murder in a school in which the killer extinguished the lives of 19 precious innocent children and two dedicated teachers. 21 persons murdered in a school where students were joyously looking forward to summer vacation only days away. Yesterday, the parents of those 19 children picked out clothes for them to wear to school. Today, they are deciding what they will wear for their burials. The depth of their grief is unimaginable. What do we do with this? There is on the one hand, a sense of helplessness given that we've been here too many times before in this country, especially. As shocking as it is, it is regrettably not incomprehensible because we've witnessed it or something similar way too many times in recent years. On the other hand, there is a strong urge to do something, anything that might make it less likely to happen again. And so some are calling for stronger gun control. However you stand on that, I'm confident the founders never imagined a scenario like this when writing the Second Amendment. Others are advocating for more armed personnel to be stationed in schools and to limit the entrance into schools to one door to be better able to confront would-be assailants before they enter a school building. Others are calling for red flag laws so that persons registering to purchase firearms who have suspicious backgrounds suggesting a propensity to violent behavior can be identified. These certainly seem like sensible proposals. All of these are aimed at preventing a person intent on mass murder from achieving his sinister goal. But they all fail to address the root of the problem, which is a spiritual issue. The battle between good and evil rages on within the hearts and minds of all persons, just as it has since Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel. Thou shalt not murder is a crystal clear commandment. And yet, here we are again. Whatever the weapon used or the motive behind it, murder is the result of human beings' failure to love one another as God intends us to do. Yesterday was a painful reminder of just how broken we are. So to answer my earlier question, what do we do with this? I would say that in addition to praying for the families of those who are grieving over their unfathomable losses today, you and I as followers of Jesus should earnestly seek to follow his example of love. There is no greater force for good than the love of God and there is nothing more needed in the world to mend its brokenness. It is our only real hope. The killers in all of these terrible mass shootings obviously failed to love others, but they also must have lost sight of the fact that they are loved, especially by God. Our task as people of faith, as people who enjoy the love of God as manifest in Jesus Christ, is to make sure everyone, everyone, is fully aware that he or she is loved by God so that hearts and minds and actions will be changed for the good by such assurance. May it be so.